All right, in the assignment for assignment five, I give you this little cheat sheet, which is called a digital coloring primer. It's a really good study tool for our final exam. It's good to remind you of the different ways you can approach digital coloring. At this point, we have made our sketches, we have made our clean vector line art, and now we're starting to think about flat color. So if I go to photo P, what am I doing on my cheese layer between my slices of bread? I'm trying to fill it in with flat color. So let's see what flat color looks like in these slides. Flat color looks like this. Like this. Like the mentorship presentation we saw from Digital Honors last class. Flat color is always where you start. Sometimes flat color can be used with really thin line art, like this kind of vintage animation. Sometimes it's used with really heavy line art, like it is here with all these full bleed shadows. Black and white are not colors, right? Black and white have never been colors in art. They are values. So they don't count for coloring. So when you have black as part of your shading, that's still considered flat color. Now, what if you want to color on top of that black later? Well, we have to skip a bunch of steps to the special effects. And more than just the special effects of full spectrum here, it's the special effects of color holds. And there's a few reasons I use Wonder Woman as my example. Because Wonder Woman has a lot of primary colors, right? So it's easy to see how the colors work by different artists. But then Wonder Woman also has a golden lasso. And so if you look at Wonder Woman with her golden lasso in flat color, it was just inked with black, right? And then filled in with, with gray at this point. But when you really want to finish off Wonder Woman and you want to make that lasso glow, you're going to replace on top of that line art you're going to change that black outline on the golden lasso to a yellow. So it looks like it's actually glowing. Same thing. Her hair here is black. This is all full bleed inking from the line art. But then in the last step, you can paint on top of that line art to put highlights in it if you want to push it that far. These are called color holds. They're on top of the black bread. They're a special effect. So think of it as a digital coloring sandwich with all the basic nutrients you need for digital coloring. But if you want to be extra fancy, you put an olive in a toothpick and you stick it on the top of the sandwich. That's what a color hold is. Let's look at some other examples. Color holds can be used to replace the color of your outline, like you see here, where it changes the color of the outline to a blue. Or here, where it takes the color of the outline and inverts it, so black becomes white or here where it's purple, or here where it's a gradient between blue and pink and red. That can give an effect that looks like a digital painting, but it's still not a digital painting because it's under line art, right? It's kind of a shortcut to get more painterly digital coloring. So on our, our digital coloring primer, our kind of handout, our cheat sheet, we can see what color, color holds do to this lemon. No matter what coloring effects you have, if it's traditional digital coloring, it's underneath a black outline. But then as soon as you replace that black outline with a color and maybe add highlights to it, it looks more dimensional. That's what you call a color hold. It's called that because the printer has to hold that part of the black film work so that it doesn't get filled with black. That's just why solid blacks are called full bleed because the printer has to fill that section of the film work with, with ink, with a full bleed of ink. Then the only things after that, after the, the olive and top of the sandwich, is you can add a background highlight, which is called an offset border, to help dark edges show up on dark backgrounds. And then we can separate it into CMYK color separation for, for, for professional printing. I'll be showing you some of that stuff at the beginning of next class before we put these up to Redbubble to make products of. So that's how color holds work. So if you have full bleeds, like full areas of black in your line art, 
Fear not, you can color within them, but that's not the first job. The first job is to find your flat colors, the colors that go underneath the line art and fill up the space. So looking at my project, I can keep using my brush to kind of fill this in, but that's going to be a lot more work than it needs to be. Instead, this is the workflow that I recommend. And it's a little bit like what I recommended for animation, right? You have all these different steps. It just saves you time. So if I like these colors, I can simply paint them off to the side and create a palette for myself, right? And then instead of painting them by hand and trying to color within the lines, which is difficult for all of us and takes time, even if we're good at it, I'm going to use what I know from compositing of my selection tools and I'm going to use the magic wand. This is in photo P. I'm going to check contiguous. I'm going to make the tolerance 32. So double what the, the standard tolerance is. And then I'm going to click on my black bread layer. And with the magic wand, even though it's a locked layer, I can still select shapes from it. So I'll select the filter shape. Then I'm going to click on my cheese layer, the only layer that's unlocked that I can paint on, and I'm going to use the paint bucket. And then when I'm on the paint bucket, I'm going to hold down option to choose colors. So you can see my foreground color will change as I click on different colors that are open within Photopea. So I'm going to use this filter color, and then I just drop it in. And then for the other part, I use my magic wand of the cigarette. I click here, I go to my cheese layer, I use the paint bucket. So I'm only going to be using the magic wand tool and the paint bucket and then holding down option to select a color and then drop it in. Oops. And because it's locked, it's going to keep you from accidentally rasterizing. Okay. Now, if I'm extra fancy, white is not a color, right? But I still need to fill it with white. So what I do is I go to my cheese layer and I'm just going to take this section of it with my lasso and I'm then going to use my paint bucket and I'm going to choose white or something really close to white like a really pale blue and then I'm just going to click where I select it. Now this is actually looks like white but this is actually duotone hard edge coloring because I split a flat color into two tones of that color. So right here already, I have flat coloring and then I have duotone hard edge coloring. But I want to start generally with just filling in all the flats. And then I can do duotones on top of that. But I know I want my cigarette to have that shadow. So how can I pick colors? instead of painting them for myself to pick over and over again. Well, I find references that I like. So for this project, I like this reference from this indie comic that I brought in and showed you called Rutabaga the Adventure Chef. And then I'm going to open that up right in the photo P file and kind of put it off to the corner here. And then I'm going to lock this as well. So now I want to do the cake of the donut, right? So I go to my line art. I use my magic wand. It has contiguous 32 tolerance. And I see this little undercut here. This little shape, right? I also need to select that. So that little shape, I held down shift and I added that one in because they're all going to be the same flat color. And then I'm going to go to my paint bucket go to my cheese layer, my flat color layer, the first topping of my sandwich, and I can hold down option and I can choose a color from this illustration from Rutabaga. And I want the donut to be kind of this color, a nice kind of print production color. And you see it filled in everything behind my line art. Perfectly clean. I don't need to worry about coloring outside of the edge. Okay, now I want like a pink for the frosting. 
So I use the magic wand, click on the frosting. There are certain areas that are contained, like these highlights, that are going to be a different color, but I want to add in this little undercut here. And now I'm going to pick a pink. Ah, oh, the pink of his shirt should do nicely. Go to my paint bucket, go to my cheese layer, hold down option, select it. And I can always change this later, but I'm thinking it's a pink frosted donut. There we go. All right. So this is how we get the flat coloring done. If you have the white background turned on behind it, everything's going to look a little bit darker than it really is. So at some point, I like to add some additional layers of bread on the bottom. Just think of it as that white Wonder Bread, you leave it out and it starts to mold, right? So I make a duplicate and then I fill a duplicate, edit, fill with middle gray. Why middle gray? Because it helps show you what can go lighter, what can go darker. So like the highlights on the pink, I might want to go lighter pink. Whereas with the white behind, it's hard to even see them. And then if you leave that bread out a little bit longer, make a duplicate, eventually it will just mold completely, edit, fill to black. And so I'm starting my coloring, and so far these color choices work pretty well on black, on gray, and on white, which means they'll work well on any background. Bright red, turquoise, orange, you know, whatever kind of shirt, whatever kind of wall color, whatever kind of locker, whatever kind of phone case, the spot illustration colors will work if they work on black, white, and gray. I'm also going to lock these. And I usually will do most of my coloring with gray as the background. So it reminds me that when I want light colors, like to fill in the highlights on the frosting, like here, here, and here, and here, right? That I need to fill them in. They're not just going to automatically fill in with white. So maybe I use this kind of pale color and then drop it in. And while they're all selected, I can also use image adjustments and levels and even brighten them a little bit more. Just really get it exactly where I want. So I find that using inspiration, bring them into the file and steal the colors directly from them is really, really helpful. But let me show you the professional way it's done. I'm going to save my work here. Save it to the desktop as a Simon 5 full color spot illustration. Remember, my image size is big. 14 by 11 by 350. But if you remember, in Photopea, we were doing 30 by 40 inches by 300, which was a lot bigger. So if it's lagging on you, shut down Chrome, let it completely close, then reopen your PSD in Photopea, and it, it should work a little bit better once you clear that, that browser's memory. Okay, let me show you the professional way this is done. Looking at these slides again. So we start with flat color. And professionally, this is kind of how you want it to work. You sketch, you do clean lines, you fill in your flat color, and then you do your, sh your shading and your, your different effects, right, to get your finished style. And that's where a lot of digital illustrators stop. They'll do flat coloring and then one extra step, like cheese with one condiment, <laughs> right, or cheese and tomato. But you can get a really nice effect that way as long as it's really controlled. So this is what's called duotone hard edge coloring. You can also see it here, where each local flat color of the skin, of the jacket, of the hair, is cut into a highlight version and a shadow version. You can see that here with my Nico, my Nikomon design, where it's split into duotone, but this time it's not hard edge, this time it's soft edged where it gradates between the, the light and the dark for the greens, for the blues. Now, before digital 
pre-production around 1997 was the norm 